Let's dive into the world of the option Greeks, which our financial metrics use to measure the options price sensitivity to various factors. In this video, we're going to be focusing on gamma, but to understand gamma, we must first understand delta. So let's dive in with a brief intro to delta, and then we'll hop into a deep dive analysis of gamma. Delta measures an option's price sensitivity to a $1 change in an underlying asset. Call options will have positive delta because when the underlying asset's price goes up, the call options price will also go up. Whereas with put options, if the underlying price goes up, the put options price will fall. Let's dive into an example. Imagine that there is a call option underlying a stock. This call option has a delta of 0.5. The call option currently has a price of $4. Now, if the stock's price goes up $1, then the call option should go up by 50 cents, and the final call option price will be $4.50. However, if the stock's price had fallen by $1, then the options value would also fall by 50 cents, and the new option price would be just $3.50. Now that we have a basic understanding of delta, let's hop into the definition of gamma. Gamma measures the rate of change in an option's delta for a $1 move in the underlying asset's price. Many people call gamma the delta of the delta because gamma is just the rate of change of the delta. Let's hop into an example of how delta may change for a call option or a put option giving a $1 price change of the underlying stock. On the top row, we have a call option with an initial delta of 0.5 and a gamma of 0.05. We can see that when the stock price rises by $1, the new delta value is 0.55. This number is derived by taking the initial delta and adding the gamma to get a 0.55 value. However, if the stock price falls, instead of adding the gamma, we subtract the gamma from the initial delta and end up with a value of 0.45 for the new delta. Whereas with the put option, the initial delta is a negative 0.5, the gamma still remains 0.05. And when the stock price rises $1, we add the 0.05 gamma to the initial delta and it becomes less negative. And now it is a 0.45 negative value. Whereas if the stock price falls, we subtract the gamma and the delta becomes even more negative and is now a negative 0.55. One thing you'll notice is that regardless of whether we're looking at a call or a put, when the stock price rises, the gamma is added to the initial delta, whereas if the stock price falls, the gamma is subtracted from the initial delta value. One universal truth that you will find is that whether you are looking at a call option or a put option, this formula holds true. The new delta should be roughly equal to the initial delta plus the gamma times the price change of the stock. So if the price change of the stock is positive, the new delta should always be higher than the initial delta. Whereas if the price change of the stock is negative, the new delta will always be lower than the initial delta. And this is universal, regardless of whether we're talking about calls or puts, even though the calls are always a positive delta and the puts are always a negative delta. Let's make intuitive sense of that formula by talking about what it means for an option to be in the money. Now, a call option will be in the money when the stock price exceeds the option's strike price. What does that mean? So if the stock price is $50 and the strike price is $40 and I own this option, that means I can buy something that's worth $50 and pay only $40. I am in the money by $10. A put option will be the reverse. If the stock price was $50 and I owned a put option with a strike price of $40, that would mean that I could sell something for $40 that's actually worth $50 and I would never do that. So in that case, the put option would be out of the money. Now let's dive into various cases where options are in the money 
or out of the money and look at their corresponding deltas. In this example, we're gonna derive delta values based on the most popular option pricing model, the Black-Scholes option pricing model. And you don't really need to know too much about how this works, but I have other videos on that if you're interested. In this example, we're gonna assume all of the inputs hold steady, including the stock price and the other variables, although we are going to keep changing the, the strike price. So this graph here is going to show option delta for both call options and put options as the strike price changes. And so we're going to assume that the stock price is $40 as marked by that dashed green line. Now we can look at the call options delta line as shown in the blue line and see how it changes over time. So when the call is the most in the money is when the strike price is the furthest below the stock price. And so we can see when the call option has a strike price of $20 and the stock price is $40, that means that we can purchase something for $20 that's actually worth $40, that is very in the money, we see that the delta approaches one. This also gives us an indicator of the probability that the option expires in the money. So the one indicates roughly that there should be about a near 100% probability that this option is going to expire in the money. But then as we see, as the strike prices increase, that delta is going to decrease over time, right? And then once we get up to 60, we don't want to buy something for $60 that's actually only worth $40. And so our call option is very far out of the money. And we will see that the delta at that point approaches zero. And it also gives us an indication that there is roughly a near 0% probability that this option, this call option with the strike price of $60 will expire in the money. Now we can contrast this with the orange line that represents the put options delta. This will stay between zero and negative one. However, when a call is deep in the money, a put option is deep out of the money, right? So if the strike price is 20, I would not want to sell something for $20, that's really worth $40, so my put is deep out of the money, and there's about a 0% probability that this option will expire in the money. Whereas, when the strike price of the put option is $60, that means I can sell something for 60, that's really only worth 40, and that means I'm deep in the money, and I have a near 100% probability of this option expiring in the money. Now think about, the intuition behind this as we reference the formula we talked about earlier. When the call or when the stock price increased, the delta of both the call option and the put option increased. This is basically showing that the call is getting further in the money and the put option is getting further out of the money. Whereas if the stock price were to decrease, then we would see a further decrease in both the call delta and the put delta, which would mean that the call option was getting further out of the money and the put option was getting further in the money. We have done a lot of talking about how delta changes at various levels of moneyness, but what we haven't discussed is how does the gamma change at various levels of the moneyness. And so we can see on this graph that option gamma is going to be the highest when an option is near the money. This means that the delta's rate of change is highest when the stock price is near the strike price. And why is that? Well, in essence, gamma reflects the uncertainty of an option's likelihood to finish in the money. Near the money, there is the most uncertainty of whether an option will finish in or out of the money. Once we get off into the tails, whether that's more in the money or out of the money, it becomes more certain whether the option will actually expire um, in or out of the money. Whereas right in the center, there's so much uncertainty 
that gamma is so high and plays such a great effect on the rate of change of delta. I believe that we can really nail this concept home with a real world example. And in this example, I'm showing Intel stock price over the past year. We can see that about one year ago, it started at about $27, and then fast forward all the way to today, it is at about $43. And that dashed green line is going to represent the strike price of the options that we're looking at at $35. Again, I am pricing these call option, put option deltas using the Black Scholes option pricing model. And I'm holding the four parameters constant that you can see in that table. Don't think too hard about it. I know I didn't explain much about that in this video, but just know that's what's going on in the back end. If we go down to the table in the bottom, we will see that we have call and put options on Intel stock price, and we have the deltas. The blue line is the call option deltas. The orange line is the put option deltas. We can see that at the very first, or the start of the timeline at 313, the put option is deep in the money because that stock price of around 27 is well below the strike price of 35. And so we can see that put delta is near negative one. And we can see the call option is also priced very far out of the money at nearly zero. But as Intel stock price increases over time, the deltas of both the put option and the call option increase over time. And then when the stock price is overlapping with the strike price that happens between about June and September in this timeline, both the call option and the put option deltas are near 0.5. And you can also see that the changes in the call option, put option deltas are the most volatile when the stock price is near that strike price. And then as we progress into the future and the stock price starts to far exceed the strike price, you can see that both the call option delta and the put option delta approach um, nearly one for the call delta and zero for the put delta. And they just hold those values very tight because they are so far in the money and out of the money. We can see gamma playing its effects very clearly here because the rate of change of the call and the put are almost nothing in the last third of this timeline. Whereas when the strike price was near the stock price in the middle of the timeline, they were extremely volatile deltas. And that, my friends, is all because of gamma. Thank you for watching this video. Please feel free to check out ryanoconnellfinance.com for assistance with any financial modeling or financial tutoring needs. And if you're interested in any of my other Greek option videos, you can click here or here. Have a great day.